writer, performer, producer, and advocate for women and girls in underserved communities. I'm most passionate about supporting women and girls of color because I believe that they deserve an equal opportunity, a purpose-driven and an empowered life, both personally and professionally. That's why I created my nonprofit organization, From the Bottom of Foundation.org, and initiatives like WORF Media, which is an acronym for Women in Reality, Film, TV, and Media. WORF aims to change the toxic, negative, destructive stereotypes and narratives that women of color face in the media. We believe that a national infrastructure that provides female content creators with platforms, resources, and opportunities to not just create, but to own and distribute content that not only entertains, but also uplifts, inspires, and empowers all women. Research has shown that the inclusion of women in media is essential to addressing racial and gender biases, and inequities in employment, salaries, and most importantly, influence. My primary mission as an advocate is to improve the access that women and girls have to the tools, the resources, and the opportunities, the information that they need to thrive. We believe that the key to success begins with learning how to own your own intellectual properties, your stories, your songs, your creative ideas, the things that you come up with. These things have often been denied to us through various ways, such as gender pay gaps, racial and gender discrimination, misogyny, and flat out theft of our ideas, our creative intellectual properties. Owning our own content or intellectual properties is the key to helping provide our communities with generational wealth and generational wellness. According to the Journal of Gender, Social Policy, and Law, while individual black artists have without question benefited from the intellectual property system, the economic effects of IP deprivation on the black community have been devastating. Intellectual property today is perhaps the preeminent business asset. And analysts recognize that blacks and other minorities in a market economy cannot participate as equals unless they too can deploy the private power generated by ownership and control of those substantial assets. Our community deserves the opportunity to participate as equals, and we don't deserve to have our preeminent business assets stolen or infringed upon. In effort to bring awareness to issues impacting creatives and our ability to have meaningful participation in the properties that we create, I'm launching the Fight for Worth campaign. In launching this campaign, I'm not just fighting for myself. I'm fighting for any and every creator who has or will have to deal with the debilitating, heartbreaking, infuriating reality of having someone violate your creative, your intellectual, and your civil rights. My team and I thought long and hard before we decided to address this publicly, and while I will not comment on ongoing litigation, I wanted to share this campaign with my family, with my friends, with my supporters, with my business colleagues, in the spirit of transparency and clarity. As a 30-year veteran of the entertainment industry, I am clear that women of color are often viewed as difficult, emotional, or not tethered to reality. There have been numerous instances where I've had to keep my mouth shut and suck it up just for the sake of not losing my livelihood. There's no question about the contributions that African Americans have made to music, to film, to TV, to all media. We've long been undervalued. And contrary to the billions of dollars that we generate for large corporations for decades, this time I've decided to fight. I've decided to not only fight, but to document every step of the journey, good, bad, or indifferent. Because I believe <laughs> that this transparency is gonna educate, it's gonna inform, it's gonna inspire future generations of content creators to protect yourself to protect yourself and others from the pitfalls of this business. For me, this litigation is about advocating for the voiceless. It is about advocating for us because we deserve the right to protect the high value, preeminent business properties that we create. Those assets that we create for the benefit of not just ourselves, but our families and our communities and the overall wealth and wellness of underserved people. I would be remiss if I did not mention those of us in the industry who represent our community but do not spread the wealth and opportunities back into the community. If you are the only one in a room who represents your community, I challenge you. I challenge you to find ways to bring others who look like you into those rooms. We owe each other the loyalty and the honor 
of not being selfish, not being envious, not being a tool that is used to perpetuate the negative damaging stereotypes in our community. Those depictions that degrade, devalue our gifts and our talents. It is time for our leaders in the industry and the media to step up. It's time for us all to take accountability for others who look like us. It's time for us to have equitable partnerships and opportunities to truly build legacy for our future generations. Worth Media is positioning itself to be proactive versus reactive. At Worth Media, we believe that content is both king and queen, and those who create it should be treated as such, and at the very least, treated as equals. We welcome all who believe in our mission to entertain, educate, inspire, and build generational wealth and wellness in our communities, and we're gonna do it together with you using the most powerful tool in the universe, the media. Please subscribe to worthmedia.com now for more details and information on the pending litigation. And please subscribe to follow my personal journey to fight for worth. Thank you for listening. What's up, family? What's up, family? What's up, family? What's up, family? Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. That was a promo that we created. Actually, shit, I created that promo. When did I create that damn promo? I created that promo a long time ago. So um, it is very important that we start having more control over our narratives and our stories and our depictions. This is a celebration. Woo, woo. Hold on. Where my sound effects at, y'all? I'm new to this, this YouTubery. Hold on, let me find it. I got to fan my sound effect. Hold on, where my sound effect at? Where them dollars at? Hold, hold on, where it go? <laughs> One more time. Uh-oh, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Um, thank you guys so much. I really sincerely appreciate the love. We are at 10,000 subscribers. It is so dope and amazing. So I'm going to get to what y'all came for, which is part two um, of Diary of a Diva. Um, and, you know, guys, I, I really... Um, I really have to say I had a, I just came back. I was on Instagram trying to move on my get my Instagram folks over here. Be sure to like, share, subscribe this video to subscribe to this video and to subscribe to WIRFTV.com, which is a network that is for us, that is by us. And it's all about own her ship, baby. If you don't own it, and this is something I had to learn the hard way. If you do not own it, you really have no power. And um, it's funny because I was asked this question. I did a, a really powerful interview tonight. Shout out to my sister, April Love. Um, she has a really great um, podcast. It is called Just Breathe. You know, oh, y'all, why y'all tell me my lip was doing that? I hate when it does that. See, the ladies on the feet are supposed to say, girl, tighten up that lip. Speaking of tightening up that lip, this color is called Fantasia. And it's from Zion Cosmetics, young black entrepreneur. Look at the packaging. Isn't that nice? It's red. It's called Fantasia. Anyway, y'all not gonna have to look at my big mouth black gums too long because I'm gonna get right into this part too. But I just wanted to say to all of the people who have taken the time out to subscribe to WIRFTV.com, um, this is so important. It's so, so important. It's so important for us to be able to have more control over our depictions and more control over our narratives and more control over how we're seen on a global level by many people in this country and all over the world. And I was just saying on my Instagram, if you're a member of the LBGTQIA community, right, and someone was telling the stories of your life and your livelihood and how things were for you and how things are for you. And those people did not come from your community. Those people did not have your lived experiences. Those people have no idea what it means to live in your shoes, right? Those people should not be able to share with the world who you are. You should have the right to share who you are as a group of people, as a black woman. We should have the ability to tell our own stories, to share our own perspectives, and I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to get into part two. I'm going to show y'all a preview for some more content, and then I'm going to get into part two. But we were talking about the Mia Copa movie, which I have not seen. And I don't mean any disrespect to Tyler Perry at all. But I think as a black community, we should be able to have the conversations that we need to have about how we can improve overall, globally, um, the perception of who we are. 
And what I do say about it, I haven't seen it yet, have not seen it, but I've heard mixed reviews and I'm not here to hate. I'm a media company now I'm more than an artist at this point. I'm still sensitive about my shit, but I'm a media company at this point, more so than an artist because I understand the power of the media, right? Um, we all love Kelly Rowland. We think she is like the baddest of the bad. She's just dropped that gorgeous. She just seems like such an amazing, incredible human being. And I've met her a few times and don't really know her, but love her. And I just feel like when you have a talent at that level and you're telling a story that, and I haven't seen it. I'm just saying this based on the reviews that is, adding to the definition of what it means to be a black woman, have black women involved at the level of making final decisions about it. And maybe that was the case. Maybe that was the case. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I just have to say, when we're telling stories about us, we need to make sure that we have the ability before it goes out to everyone else, not a vanity credit, producer credit, not, um, (laughs) executive produced by Wendy Williams who can't even handle or isn't even able to be in control of her own life like a real authentic like bottom line final say on that narrative before it goes out before millions and millions of people and then you have a greater chance of people really receiving it more than they are because it feels more authentic, more culturally competent. Um, It feels more like something that more women can really relate to because the story is told from a female perspective. When you have this whole like black female lead and great black whatever and whatever, it should always have a final say, not just created and executive produced by Katori Hall or whatever, that's just a hypothetical. It just needs to be a situation where before it gets out to the world, someone from that community, somebody from that background and from that experience is able to look at it and say, this is a great direct representation of who we are. Even if it's not true and the story and it's made up, we still need to feel like we can identify with it. So when you're doing shows and films and projects that are hyper focused on telling the stories of black women, put black women in power positions, not vanity credit producers not I cast black women not I pay black women more than they ever made not put them in positions to really truly honestly be able to say this is a representation of who we are because that final stamp that final power play came from a woman from the group that it represents that's not too much to ask they're not gonna let me go do the Italian mafia mob movie and I don't want to do it because I don't know nothing about that yet Allow people to tell their own stories. It's that simple. And that's what we're doing over at WIRFTV.com. So let me show you guys a promotion for another documentary film we have coming up on WIRFTV.com. It is a short trailer, but I got to get it in when I fit in. And then I'm going to run part two of Diary of a Diva. I know I don't have no edge control. I know I need to silk out and all that other shit. Ignore it all. Focus on the content. All right, guys, check out Broken Things coming to WIRF TV this spring. Men and children had their lives cut short because of domestic violence. This kind of violence is prevalent in our society. Unfortunately, many people have experienced or even watched their loved ones go through. Adolescent relationship abuse. Um, No, no boundaries. We're talking about domestic violence. Violence. I just don't want to be about no damn domestic violence. I'm a fucking singer! My mother's boyfriend beat her so badly one time that I had to go see her at the hospital. That really did something to me. Not only did he ruin my mother's life, but he helped ruin mine.
I am strong. I just called her because I said I need her. I was like, Mom, please come get me. We're there for you no matter what. No matter what situation in your life. I love you no matter what. She ain't going with you either. Pedophile, child molesting ass, bitch. Holy shit. Nigga, that's bullshit. Did you like my photo? Oh, once yeah. again, once again, everybody goes off on me. Living with someone that molested our mom. And Sarah's daddy is a fucking animal. That motherfucker's a mom. Mm -hmm. They have to do something dumb so I can get locked the fuck up and do something to him. From being molested multiple times. They have some kind of a past. That past do not dictate their future. I don't know, man. There's a lot of broken things. Broken things. Broken things. Whoop, whoop. Guys, I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of that. I can't wait for you guys to see this documentary film. Um, I'm going to be talking to Sarah. A lot has changed. She's in a much better place now. Her life is in such a good place. She has a beautiful son. She is now remarried. She is no longer with Tony. But um, I can't wait for you guys to see this film. I cannot wait for you to see this film. I think it's really going to, you know, like Lifetime will show us surviving R. Kelly, right? And a Wendy Williams downward spiral. But can we please highlight some of the stories of the survivors who have been able to get past it? It happens so much in our communities. And it's almost like we have to learn to really figure out a way to live with it. So I just feel like at Worth Media, Worth TV, our goal is to make sure we can have these honest, transparent conversations. And on our site, we're not just going to be a streaming service. We're a community for us, by us. So we will be having live uh, panel discussions. A lot of these these panels that cost like a whole bunch of money for everybody to attend, we're going to make those things available for our people to be able to enjoy and participate in and really be able to have really transparent, authentic dialogue about the things that are super important to us. So, And we'll also have our gear. Yes, this own her ship. Let me promote. Boom, boom, boom. That will be available um, on worthmedia.com in our store. And I don't have the promo item with me now, but um, make sure you guys check out Good Shade. We got some good stuff coming, you guys. I just, like I said, I met with a couple people about some content. Um, some of your favorite content creators are going to be on worth WRFTV.com. I'm so excited. And um, this next uh, Diary of a Diva conversation, I'm about to show y'all part two with me and Monifa. Please share this video. Please like this video. Subscribe. Y'all see they shutting our shit down. And let me say to all the people who um, are commenting and have feedback, whether it's good or bad, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There, there are always going to be people with opinions. And I love that. I think that's super important for us to continue to to be able to open up dialogue and, and have real talk. So I'm going to go live with you guys again on Sunday. But I'm about to show you part two of Diary of a Diva. For those of you who have not seen part one yet, you can watch part one and part two on Worth, W-I-R-F-T-V dot M-F and com for us, by us. And we geeked, y'all, we geeked. We're happy. And like I said, all the divas are invited. I'm interested in sitting down and having a conversation with all the R&B divas. Excuse me. And not just women who were on the show, you know, like I said, any diva in the entertainment industry who wants to tell a story that we don't often get to hear, one that is not filtered through a culturally incompetent white male or any other person lens that's not a black woman. This is a space where content is queen. So if you are interested in authentic stories like the one you're about to watch right now, part two, if you're interested in authentic real stories, support us. Just go subscribe, please. Okay. Thank you guys for getting us to 10,000 subscribers. Listen, every YouTuber, even the ones with a million, got to 10,000 at some point. So I'm just geek. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is part two. And the only reason why I'm showing it is because y'all done did so good subscribing to worktv.com and this YouTube channel. And y'all deserve it. Part two of Diary of a Diva. I hope you guys can look at this objectively and I hope you guys enjoy. Thank y'all for watching. I literally had two franchises on TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and they stopped paying me. I lost my house. I'm Again. watching y'all do. And then I see you do the season, and I was like, I know, I know I call Mo, I call Mo. But you know, you know this, you know I called you, Stop. but it was in the paper, it was talking. in the blogs, it didn't come from me, everybody was talking about it. People were ripping me to shreds about this lawsuit the minute it was filed. And right. nobody picked up the phone. And I remember calling you, I remember this like it was yesterday, I remember calling you before season three, because in my spirit, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna be a producer on season three. I'm gonna put my producer hat on, I'm not gonna be on camera, people hate me anyway, it don't matter. And I remember I called you and I was like, Mo, for, for, for season three, or maybe it was season two, mm -hmm. I was like, how do you feel about, y'all should get married, because we talked about you getting married. Y'all should get married on the show. You was like, I don't know, you know how Rez is, she a Libra, let me talk to her. <laughs> you had a wedding on the show and I didn't even get an invitation. Yes, you did. I yes, did you not. Did. I called you, I, yes, don't do that. When don't did I that. get an invitation? Girl, I called you and Faith on the same day and I asked y'all, were y'all gonna be able to come? And you told me no. No, and my heart broke. I never talked to you yeah, about- you, Yeah, you did. Rest was saying right there, I was in the passenger seat of our car. I, I, I reached out to you. I didn't know it was like you losing, I didn't know you weren't getting, I didn't know the, 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 the severity of what was happening. I thought you were just protecting yourself, like, and you just would, in a, whatever you were feeling, and it was all, White people, white people, Adam, Adam, and all of them. I know that they did some bullshit because I told them when they tried that shit with Brandy and um, Kiki at the Cavado shit, I was like, that, that was fucked up. And if you had tried it with my family, I'd have punched you in the face. Y'all don't have to do anything like that. First of all, that's our child. And I was like, we're five women that are are strong personalities that have shit going on. You don't have to make nothing up. There's no reason for you to do that. You understand what I'm saying? I understood that they, what they tried, I was just like, I said, well, if they're clear about what they aren't supposed to do in, with you, I was just a cast member though, I'm not in the way like you were. This is your baby. And they, you, were in the, you were in the way, you were getting a whole nother, you had a whole nother set of stressors and, and, and responsibilities that A, I know, I know you were navigating and didn't understand, and I'm trying to figure out why you're not talking to me, and I felt left out, and when I say left out, I mean abandoned, shut down, from early, from early, it started early. Like you said, you were aware of certain things, like, you know, yeah, like, how dare you? Like, that's sexual misconduct to ask my daughter to do something as disrespectful as you asked That was crazy. Do. And everybody was aware of that. Yes, and yes. And it was just very, like, Show no, some nobody zero. ever came to me to check and be like, are you okay? Nobody ever one time except Faith. Okay. And honestly, Kiki. Okay. I didn't get it from you. I didn't get it from Selena. I didn't Around get that it, time? No. I didn't, I, I never got a R. You okay? Is you had everything to, okay. You had to I don't, at some point. I remember those moments, but I still don't understand it. I still have to ask, what was it that made you react that way when Wendy asked you? Because when Wendy asked you if you missed me and you responded the way you did, I was like, what? That was that was that was hurt actually. I didn't want to. Everybody start. already hated me enough. I wasn't trying to make nobody hate you, like. No, but you did, because I, I, I distinctly I, remember. Going to social media mm -hmm. and seeing people say, well, you know, now she done pissed off Mo. Well, you know, if she did something that wasn't Mo, she ain't shit. Because oh, now. you were the, one of the most beloved divas on the show because you were so light. And because you were so, let's just stay neutral and do it positively. I was, so I for Selena to say she misses me and for Kiki to say she, and even Kiki responded like, what do you mean? I did not clear it up, but it made it look like I did something. That's not, that, wasn't my, that wasn't my intention. My intention was just not to say anything because I was angry. That was, that was already, I was angry. I was angry and it, I was angry and I was hurt. I was more hurt than angry because I really wasn't angry. I was like, where the fuck is my friend? And why did why is she not talking to me? Why is she acting an ass? Like I felt like all of the situation with the late it was just a lot, Nikki. You just you became somebody different. Now that I'm here, you're telling me I can understand why, but you still weren't talking to me. And when I I felt like when I tried, it was like no, 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 and you weren't giving me this information because you could have trusted me with this information. That is the issue. You didn't feel I like did you could. I did not feel like I could trust you with the information because wow. I felt like, well, when I walked okay. in and I saw you sitting with my arch nemesis. Really, arch nemesis, this is what we do. Thornton. I did not, oh, 
Nikki, and, the last time. and and it was very clear. Y'all watch based on the mess of it all is what I'm saying. Okay, so and the manipulation of it all, and we knew that there was manipulation happening. We we're not we we knew because we talked about it. I'm thinking production. I'm watching out for production and just making sure like. They don't have me in no trick bag. I, I feel all of this was no. It was a, it was a direct Within attack us. on me. Right. But what I'm saying is, no one else but you was were, being attacked. The way you were showing up. But you're up. saying I'm not showing up for you. But I mean, I'm not was showing, showing up, up to for do me. The but work. you, you, I know. But it, you were going through all this stuff. It was coming out as it, as this. What happened with us is the disconnect between us, personally, as far as our friendship uh -huh. is concerned goes, happened when I realized that you were becoming very close to someone to that Serena. I had a lot of issues with. Serena, okay. And it's impossible for me to trust you. You know me. This person does not like me. And this person uses every opportunity that she and her sister and Phil and everybody who's on that side. I didn't see it that way. To say that I'm like trying to do some scam with a charity event, I'm like, is this what we're doing? Like, wow. everybody knows the Center for Black Women's Wellness is a well-established organization. They've been around for years. Everybody knows these women deserve the opportunity to be treated nicely and to have great things happen. So to set me up and have whole sit down, which you weren't even a part of the conversation she had with I was Angie, not. Latasha and Rocky, where she was, they were like, yeah, she's scamming or sound like a scam to me. And they're eating me up. It's not for kids, it's for women. That's it's also, it's a prom for women. You gonna stick on prom? <laughs> you gonna hold on prom? Yeah, he, he's, he's holding on to that. I don't like where it's headed. I think it's headed straight. See What? To Chuck E. Cheese. Stop it. Is this a high school event or what? High school don't even do Chuck E. Cheese. But damn grammar school. No, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. You want to do a concert in a prom hall right. for women with real artists who sold millions of records. Is Barney going to be there? Oh, but I heard Spongebob was made. <laughs> <laughs> It's very sneaky to throw a charity in to get us all to come sing in a show together <laughs> and for free. Very sneaky, sister. And it's also something that's very fraudulent. And you're friends with this person. I'm not gonna go and be like, "Hey, Mo, Selena and them eating me up, calling me a scammer, and saying my charity event is this and that and the third because you are friends with this person. So it, as long as I show up and do my work, I don't, you know. And I and I and I honestly was looking for you to do a check in, and I never felt it. I okay. felt it from Faith. I felt it from Kiki. I know her. And I know that the things that you said is some stuff that she just. But let me tell you something. Y'all can poke holes at me all night about no, a decision it ain't even about that, that I will stand by until I close my eyes. When it comes to someone that I love and respect, I got an issue with that. I felt it from people behind the scenes. I felt like Mo was focused on Mo and Therese and your friend and your the next level for y'all. Sure, and congratulations on um, R&B Divas Atlanta. Yes. How cool is that? Awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, we uh, yeah we we showed the world everything. Our engagement yeah, and right. our and our wedding. We shared it with the world. We thought it was uh, it was very necessary. So when the Wendy Williams thing happened, and mm -hmm. then probably the most hurtful of all. This is after the season wraps. Mm -hmm. I did an interview with Lenny. I talked even still about, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna let them fuck up our relationships that way. Mm -hmm. I love everybody involved. I wish everybody the best. Um, I'm sorry that things have gotten raveled and out of control with the uh, R&B divas, but you know, unfortunately, the lesson learned. Lesson there, it lessons. The lesson and I learned. wanna say, I wanna go on record and say tonight on your show, I love you, Selena Johnson. I love you, Monifa Carter. I love you, Kiki Wyatt. I love you, Angie Stone. I love you, Faith Evans. I love you, Kelly Price. Any woman associated with this brand, I love them dearly. And I think that I know that there are great things in store. And just because it didn't work for me or Kelly or Faith or whatever, it doesn't mean that it can't work and it can't get back to what we had in season one. At the end of the day, 
Are, don't we want kind of someone to get, keep it real with us as opposed to giving us a flim flam situation? I mean, you know, and that's the thing. Like, I'm a very say it like you mean it person. And the, the crazy thing about our situation is we had all been friends long before. I mean, these are like 10, 15 year friendships and we never had what we've had in the one season of, of R&B Divas. So I think, yeah, it'd be great to have people who tell you like it is and tell the truth. But if you misinterpreted it for whatever reason and certain things are left out and, you know, you get half sentences, then, you know, that could turn bad. I think the OJs said in their song, for the love of money. Uh, See, you know what? (laughs) That hit the nail on the head. And there was this era of everybody wondering what was going on with me because I wasn't on the show. But for somehow, for some reason, while I'm going through all of this hell with these people, Mm -hmm. my name keeps coming up in 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 interviews and, well... It came up when Wendy Williams did the thing, and then it came up when you and Selena did an interview. With Lenny? Uh huh. And somebody called me and was like, Oh, you got ate up on the radio in New York. And I'm like, Ate up on the radio? By mm-hmm. whom? Monifa and Selena. And I was like, Ain't no way. And they sent me the clip. <laughs> New York and Chicago. I'm from, I'm from here. I'm from New York. And Selena's from Chicago. It's, you know, there's a lot of similar sensibilities there. And the bottom line is Selena, I, you know, Selena for me. And I think that's why we can, you know, we, we're, we're like we are and we're friends. Um, you know, we're, we have a, a bond is because we have a lot of the same sensibilities and, and, and like, I think, approach to things and life and the heart. And we, I just think we're both real folk. Yeah, you do see a, a different kind of vibe between both of you. And you also see the opposing kind of situation. Mm. And I think that has surfaced on quite a few episodes mm. of R&B Divas Atlanta, uh, just as much as R&B Divas uh, LA. It, it, it's, now, I don't know, again, I don't know what's staged. I don't know what, what is real. <laughs> but um, but it, it's, been, it's been pretty interesting. And I thought the initial concept, if I understood Nikki Gilbert to explain it to me the right way, was that the whole purpose of it was to bring some wonderful ladies of music together, all for a tour. And, and that was the, the original I, purpose? That's what I believe. All, all, for, all for a tour to... That's what she said when she was here. Yeah. All oh. for all, all for Episode one. But, you know, she was talking about that in the first place anyway. What do you think, Nikki? What would you think about... You came to me with that whole idea oh, when okay. well, we were even talking about the charity album. She told me about this, like... I Oh, we had a year, all kind of discussed that at some point. Season one? Season one. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was a good concept. I mean, you know, to kind of bring all the ladies to kind of uh, and bring them out. The bottom line is that I think personality got in the way. Um, manipulation. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it, I, it, it, it just did. It was just a whole bunch of stuff and feeding. It was just like planting seeds of destruction you know maybe not on purpose initially and like i expect selena to eat me up selena well oh, nikki go sink the boat like we didn't have any money we lost everything um skip mm-hmm. was like here i go skip was like i don't like the way they painted you on the show i'm doing a show with swv mm-hmm. i know it's tight it's okay. Let me put some money in your pocket. Mm-hmm. You need a vacation. Mm-hmm. So I was this thing. You, when he said, Lenny said, yeah, Nikki's um, hosting our special. You were like, Nikki, yeah, I heard that. I'm the one from New York, blah, 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 blah. Selena was like, oh, Nikki gonna sink the boat. I was like, what? I'm preparing to go to Jamaica. Nice. So, but I'm uh, still mad about that. I'm a, I'm a New Yorker artist, and I'm not on that boat ride. Uh-oh. Boat ride? I, I, There's not a boat ride. Oh, whatever it is. <laughs> I ain't going. On it. I know. Nikki's on it. Who? Oh. Yeah. What kind of boat ride is that? That's a sinking boat. It's not a boat ride. It is okay. not a boat oh. ride. It's not a boat ride. What kind of boat ride is that? You said boat ride. That's like <laughs> <laughs> You're not even saying boat. Yeah. Exactly. What Wait. kind of boat ride? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a boat ride. We're doing the Splash Fest in Montego Bay. Uh, it's People it's it's a flight. Uh-uh. Yes, people, and we uh, weren't invited. Well, hold on, hold on. Don't shoot me. If it was me, we'd be there. Who are the people there? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Tell me who's the talent. Let, let, well, it was organized by by BLS. So this particular trip that's happening uh, next <laughs> week is going to have Nikki Gilbert. It's going to have actor Lance Gross. It's going to have Joe and the ladies of SWV. Okay. Shh. 
Can I throw shade? <laughs> or no? <laughs> no, no, no. You can't throw shade. Okay. And he said, you talked about how y'all met. Talked about who, how who met? You and Selena talked about how you met. Uh-huh. And you were like, oh, we met in Detroit. I was doing this little theater thing. And I was like, really? That is not, what? And she, we were all in, living in this house while we were doing this play in Detroit. Right. But anyway, we would have these talks and we'd drink wine and be down. I was doing this theater thing. Like, you blew it all off. And I was like, Nikki, where is this? If that was in that moment, and, and I'm gonna, That's I'm gonna, said. listen, I'm sorry, baby, I won't, you don't make me cry. In that moment, we had already, there was the wedding. I, if I, if I had any, I'm gonna apologize for that because that's not how I feel about you. And that's, and even when I have any other, I have never blown it off. You could go and research any fucking um, interviews I've done. And what, and I always uphold you. Now, I might have been being um, led or petty or it, it, because of what I was feeling at the time was very close to when me and Reza got married. Um, and I, or I, I was angry. I was feeling, I was feeling the way I was feeling and we weren't talking to each other. And well, at that point, of course not, because you, I just watched you on Wendy Williams throw me under the bus. I like, didn't, but that wasn't me throwing you under the bus. Well, that I, wasn't. He can saw it that you. way. I saw it that way, and even Selena was like, "Woo!" Quite honestly, all of those motherfuckers don't have what we have. Like, like which is why I'm like, rewind. What? What did I do? Nikki, anybody watching it noticed it. Kiki was making it more. The fact that she even said something about it I just I opted to not say anything do you understand what I'm saying okay I mean you get that okay you left me you didn't talk to me you shut me out I, I didn't know hell. like that I didn't know that it was held this way you sitting here Mo you don't read the blog not like that girl no. nigga, I'm in a case today I know that that I'm asked in a deposition about R&B divas and the fact that people don't like me because of this fucking show to today, this shit is real life for me. Was not a TV show, and the fact that I created this shit with love, we were we and my were fucking friends. No, you weren't there for me, and that's what I felt from you. I felt abandoned. Maybe you felt the same thing for me. I did. I did. But there was never a there was never a moment where I felt like you stood up for me. In the, in the face of public scrutiny. I felt like you lumped me in with everybody Even else. Even when we weren't filming, I never got a call. Well, you know, life was happening and yeah. So yeah, I was like, up. fuck it. I did, I did have a fuck it. Like, you know what? I tried, I, I did, I felt like I tried. Nikki, I feel like you knew me enough. Like even if you guys weren't friends, I could be cool with her and you, you know what I'm saying? And you just, but it wasn't, for me, it's not even about me and but her that's being what you friends. just said. You, you For said me, it that. wasn't even about us being friends. It wasn't about that because, again, Selena but is not the person that I would never. That I, would I never. had the the you and I had a different relationship. Right. We've been friends through. Ebb and but flow, I know your how highs, to, your lows, my highs, my low. We've been on the flow together, right. figuring it out. Right. Right. For but sure. I don't have that relationship with her, and neither do you. Right. I feel like when the opportunity came mm -hmm. for you to decide which side of the situation but you Nikki, were going to be you, on. You felt because erratic. Because I looked like I was losing at the time. You it wasn't about, see, no, you, you felt erratic. I didn't know what you were going, I didn't to hear the examples of how on, dude, NBC. you were exploding on camera. When? You don't remember when we was at Faith House? It was a whole, at like, Faith House. When we was at Faith Department. The situation at Faith Department where we were all sitting around. It was production. Exactly. So if you know, that's a classic example of what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I said to production ahead of time, let's not do this whole drink thing. And Kiki even said, can we not do this now? Because it was a whole, let's sit Kiki in a circle and reprimand her for her choices. That was the, that was the, the, the ongoing thing. Yes, it was. And that's the sidebar conversations. So when the liquor, that was the one moment I was like, can we not just have these fucking drinks and just be able to have a sober conversation amongst friends? That wasn't blowing up. That was frustration with the fact that nobody realized what was happening. And what was happening? I'm not going to go and say this person came to me from production and said they're they're forcing us to feed y'all liquor. Right, but I shouldn't have to say that. If we're friends and you see something is happening and I'm acting a little distant, and you also it felt like you was coddling Kiki's bullshit 
in in my eyes as well. I felt I was it was a lot of I was like, what? This is full, like you know because you we know Kiki is Kiki, right? But we also know you just said yourself. You just mm -hmm. said yourself. They asked my daughter to proposition to put her put her to do something inappropriate with her husband. Mm -hmm. The first opening scene of of, of of episode one, she's in the studio. They asked somebody to go give her a letter. Somebody had to tell but me that's what happened. To, but though. these things were actually happening. I love you. I hope you feel Hey, and same. watch your timing. Hey, Michael, this is you. And just be on it. I always keep you with me. Oh, thank you. Hold on, uh, Miss Thing, honey. Y'all look close. Uh -oh. <laughs> close. Get your hand off my man now. Y'all laughing, but I'm serious. So if people are intentionally trying to provoke her, mm -hmm. because you know she's going to act a certain way, and I'm a producer seeing this happen, mm -hmm. and I got other black women producers coming up to me behind the scenes saying, this is what's happening. I'm not going to come to cast and say, hey, y'all, especially if I don't feel like I can trust you. This, the mistrust happened once I leaned in to Selena when Nikki Yes, you, because that is not somebody I trust it. But you you never explain to me why as your friend. Like you never talked to me about it. And I thought you were being like I was like, you I felt like you was to to her. Really, Nikki? Yes, so really, Mo, really. But Nikki, I didn't know anything where anything you, said said you were already you said yourself you were already shifting because I wasn't communicating with right, you. Right, but that so doesn't if you're mean already I was, shifting. Yeah. You're just gonna shift back after I tell you what's going on with her? And then you and I had conversations about Selena. You and I talked about Prior, and I told before you I'm uncomfortable with our interactions. You did, and you and did. Selena were cool. So if you knew already I was uncomfortable with her, I'm not expecting you to not be know friends why. with her. I would never give no <laughs> ultimatum like, you gonna either be cool we're with her, feeling. maybe you were feeling like y'all had more in common. No, nigga, we but were feeling, I, I was getting to know her. Right, mm -hmm. which is why I was so shocked at how easy it was for you to just assume that it was about you. It wasn't about you. It was about the fact that you were cool with somebody. That's why I said the I enemy. Know. A friend of my enemy is an enemy of mine. I didn't know the things that she was doing, though. That you didn't know? Honest. I did not know that. To, what, what was coming to me was like, I don't understand. You know, we was all, we were cool. I was here for this, this, and that. I was like, I don't know where the breakdown happened. Of course, if some, she's doing shit, like making calls and doing shit like that, that's not going to be shared with me. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? I wasn't privy to the no, you, no you were bullshit. privy to what was in the press. Never once did I see that is not my friend. Like that's not what she meant. But imagine what it feels like because you're my girl. Like we cool as fuck. I wasn't sure. And you're not Nikki, checking I was to not make sure. sure I'm okay. I wasn't sure. I didn't. I if you like called, you would have known. That Nikki, you was always all right. You was or anytime I spoke to you after that, I know I reached out to you, Nick. And even, and not just about the wedding. Like you were not featuring me, period. Because I was in the middle of a litigation. I did not. And not being paid and being I did not know all of that, the, the, those, those nuances. Now that you're telling me a lot of the things that you're saying, I get it. I didn't, I didn't know, and I was talking about this years later, like I don't know what she was dealing with. I didn't know what she embarrassed to say, this is what she did with the show. I know she was learning. I, I know that she was going through shit, but I didn't know to the to the the severity. No, because oh. I was working so hard to protect y'all. I did not know this. How they you? labeled me a problem and they wanted me out of it. If you would have fucking said that, Nick, Nikki, Nikki, if you, Nikki, I was I was protecting my friends and they took my show, and nobody stood up for me. Nobody knew that. Okay. Nobody knew that. Did anybody ask? Y'all didn't know I was in a I'm lawsuit? Y'all yes, didn't I, know that I was getting but, torn apart? But we didn't know why, right? I knew the lawsuit. I knew that, that you may have, I didn't know if it was about you selling the show. I didn't know what- No, I didn't sell anything. I just didn't of, know any better. I didn't know that I had- Right, and I get that. But but in that, you shut down. You started not trusting nobody, including me. Be way before, way before, it started with the bus. It started with the little things when you, 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 it's just, it ended up always being, that's how we came up with the nickname Mills because it was always me, Kiki, and Selena. And I'm like, where the fuck is Nikki? Where the fuck? Later for faith. Busted my ass trying to but prevent no horrible ass. shit like asking Sis. people to do inappropriate shit on camera. But you know that happen. nobody, did, did I ever do anything inappropriate on camera that you felt like was coaxed? You know nobody can make me do any foolishness. And but nobody there were people, did. but there were people who were not maybe as evolved or confident in their position as you 
that were that were having those issues. And as a person who asked everybody to participate, as a person who put, imagine you bring all your friends together, you spend all your money shooting a sizzle reel, I'm you like, put where the, the, fuck are you? the whole thing happens. They moved me out, and they and they created this narrative that I was trying to be toxic and destroy opportunities for people. And you guys bought into the narrative for whatever okay. reason. Okay, I can say that. I can admit to that. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when, once I once you shut me out, or it felt like it was this, right? Regardless of the why, it's like it's it's that's what it started looking like. And that I did buy into it. I did. I have to I have to admit that based on the hurt feelings, the disappointment, I'm looking at, I'm feeling like, okay, she's trying to get me to like what is going on? Because I don't know what the issues were. You weren't telling me because you you feeling like I'm like I'm a uh I felt like you were sleeping with the enemy. I understand that you were dealing with some things that were way larger above my pay grade, quite honestly. Um, because you were the creator of the show, because this was your baby, I just felt like you could have, you could have trusted, you could have trusted me. People manipulated friendships that have been years and years and years and years just fine. And it's not just me and you. It's everybody connected to the franchise. Our women in R&B music who needed each other for a lot of reasons. A lot of opportunity for us to build something incredible. Like what? What made you not trust me to talk about it in the before it even got to you and Selena not being? You know what I'm saying? Because I felt like the women in the the cast, you, Selena, even Angie, I felt like the priority for y'all was how do we make this tour happen? Because that was the, that was the big dream, right? For me, the issue was what has happened to this franchise. Yeah. Where this franchise is today, I saw it going there while I was in the midst of it. I saw into the future of what was going to happen and I was fighting to save our friendships. And I was fighting well, to save I wish you would have done so that much real more than just the opportunity for tour. A, Nikki, it would have made a big difference. I was doing it in real time and I was very clear. It couldn't have just been me coming to you saying, Mo, they're trying to basically destroy this franchise like what they're doing maybe not trying consciously yeah yeah what they're trying to turn yeah, this happens. into yeah, 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 is yeah. going to destroy this franchise right if i said that to you then you wouldn't have received it mo if i said to you then okay and i, and I, I, I don't okay. believe you would have received it. why i don't believe anybody would have received it because i think at that you point you had already felt like i was tripping that that was that is the case and, and i think at that point the public already felt that i was tripping listen in real time, if, if if you had done that in real time, it could have made a difference. Well, I was working real hard behind it. the scenes I, I without bringing it to y'all. The network it. tried to do a TV one, busted their ass to try to fix it. But their hands were tied. Yeah. And I can't bring all that to y'all. Because at the same time that I'm a friend, I'm still an EP of a fucking show. I and just me bringing it to you is me bringing it to you as a friend. That's not business. Right. As a business, I can't go tell you all of the shit that happens. And that's why I coined the phrase, the whiz, the little man behind the curtain manipulating shit. And maybe I didn't see. Um... No, y'all didn't because none, nobody saw it. I was in the middle of it. And because I saw the man behind the curtain mm -hmm. before I could be seen as someone who knew what the fuck she was talking about. Mm hmm. I had to be seen as a destructive force in this That's franchise. the only way it was going to work for them. I had to be painted in a very negative, toxic way in order for the public to not like me and for my group of friends to feel like I was trying to sabotage them. And it worked. I didn't feel like you were trying to sabotage. I felt, I felt, I did, I felt like unsure. So I was navigating trying to protect y'all, trying to keep my job. Trying to, make and I believe you. You, I, you know, I don't. I believe you. And then, and then when I reached out, like, let's try to fix it with Ayama because she's neutral and she's not gonna take anybody's side. She's just gonna I fix was, the problem. And you were like, nope. I did. I wasn't in a space. You said no to Ayama. You're in the back seat telling Rocky to roll out. You, you throw, you do the Wendy Williams thing. You keep saying I isolated you. I unplugged from that whole thing, and you were deep in it, Mo. You were deep. In it. And then somebody was like, oh, they're talking about spinoff from Mo and Therese. And I was like, oh, that might be explained. Nobody ever talked about that with us. Ever. We never talked about that. I felt like you chose Think Factory. Absolutely not. Where are we at? Is this, is this fixable? Is this something that we can move forward from? Because I, I, outside of you feeling like I abandoned you and I, you know, turned on you, um, which 
there's still a lot more to unpack. I don't think that you see where you could appreciate my position. Definitely wasn't about another fucking show, no spinoff. It definitely, it was about my friendship with you and feeling like you, I didn't know it, who, I was like, who the fuck is Nikki? What is happening? Like, and without knowing the severity of what you were dealing with. Now, years beats later, I could appreciate it growing, kind of seeing things for what it is. I absolutely, before this conversation, I, I see things differently. I've grown, I've evolved. I, I know you have with all the shit that you've gone through. I've been through some things. Life has been life in. Is this, is this something that we, can, that we can come back from? Because when we got in the room the other day, it was like, I, that's when I felt like, yo, that's my, I felt like my dog. Like I felt, I never had no anim, I never had like ill will towards you. I never wanted to see you hurt. I never disparaged you. I always held you up. Brilliant, talented, brought us together. Always, always. Now, two moments that I might have maybe didn't want you to feel that way or was feeling in my feelings and could have done better. I apologize for how it made you feel. And it felt like, I left you hanging out there and if I didn't hold you up because I leaned into some things because of the way I was in my life or where I was at or how I was viewing things, I apologize because I love you and I've, and I've never stopped loving you ever. You, I just didn't know, I didn't know who Nikki was at a certain point and it didn't feel safe. That's it. That's, that's it. So those, those two moments where you felt publicly that I didn't hold you up. I want to tell you that I apologize for that, for that Monifa, where Monifa was then, because it's definitely something that wouldn't happen now. Um, that definitely wouldn't happen now. And for to know that you were dealing with all the things like to the, to the level of, I did not know, and you having to deal with that as well. I'm sorry, sis. I'm sorry. I apologize for that wholeheartedly. Thank you, mom. Is it something that we can move forward from with this understanding and where we are as women. Well, that's the reason why I thought it would be important for us to come together for this Urban that's One right. Honors when the opportunity came up because I realized that there were a lot of variables that contributed to why we are where we are here. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason I needed us to have this conversation because I needed to be honest yeah. and tell you how I felt. And I'm glad yeah. you were honest and you told me how you feel. Yeah. And there are a lot of open wounds still from this r Divas thing, right? But I feel like God for me, God. this the, this is the this is the wound for me. For me too, but I mean, I mean, not to make it to not make it just about us and understanding the bigger picture of it all. For sure, but that's what it is. It's sure. all of us together who built this thing. For sure, and I would love to see us have an opportunity to repair our. Re if nothing happens, like it's not even about. Like, it's not about what the it's next like, thing. It's about is that It's we about we need each do. other. It's just life is life, and we need each other. I'm glad we but had can a chance. We? To like, you know. Can we? Yeah. So, to prosperity, good health. Gathering my life together in a bag. <laughs> Truth. Sisterhood. Yay! Mm -hmm. Thank you.